We live in a world obsessed with celebrity cultures, where bad behavior often gets more attention than hard work and where talented actions go viral. Drama sells and nowhere is this more evident than in our fascination with celebrity diets and weight loss transformations. We can't help but tune in, especially when it comes to extreme weight loss stories that dominate headlines. Hello my dears and welcome. I'm Marina, a registered dietitian, here to help you on your weight loss journey. After losing 80 pounds myself, I became passionate about helping others through science-based advice. That's why I hesitated to cover today's topic about Nikocado Avocado's dramatic weight loss. But after seeing how other YouTubers are discussing it, I felt I can offer a deeper, more informed perspective. Tell me everything! Is Nikocado's extreme weight loss beneficial for his health? Was his weight loss too fast and a result of interventions like Ozempic, bariatric surgery or a specific diet? And what about loose skin after such a dramatic change? We'll answer everything. Stick till the end to also find out if returning to mukbangs might threaten his weight maintenance. Let's dig into the facts, but also speculate a little using science. I make learning fun, incredibly fun. For those of you who don't know, let's quickly summarize who we are talking about today. Nikocado Avocado is a controversial YouTuber known for its over-the-top clickbait mukbang content, although he originally began his YouTube journey as a vegan and talented violinist. Recently, he shocked fans by revealing that he had lost 250 pounds in secret over the past two, two and a half years. Once weighing 411 pounds, he now weighs 158 pounds. This transformation was part of what he called his Gradle Social Experiment, where he continued posting pre-recorded videos that maintained the illusion of him still being unhealthy and obese while embarking on a weight loss journey behind the scenes. His goal? To show just how deeply people are consumed by internet personalities and the stories they create. In his reveal video, Two Steps Ahead, Nikocado explained that he had been two steps ahead of his audience the entire time and that he'd always planned to lose the weight eventually. I am always two steps ahead. While some fans praised him for this dramatic transformation, others speculated about how he managed to lose the weight with plenty of theories around his mental and physical health. Now, I'm well aware of all the controversial things Nico has said and done over the years for clicks and views as a part of his internet persona and am not a fan. I also dislike the way he leans into this villainous superior attitude towards his audience. Attention all peasants! People watching made him rich, so if anything, he should be thankful for the viewers who continue to support him. Thank you for watching my film. Additionally, I have some strong opinions on modern mukbang culture, especially the extreme overeating that not only possesses serious health risks for the mukbangers themselves, but also promote disordered eating patterns among their viewers. But that is a topic for another spicy video. While Nico is undeniably a part of this problematic mukbang world, I think it's fair to give credit where credit is due. Losing any amount of weight is hard, but Nico's extreme weight loss is on another level. There's no strict definition of extreme weight loss, but losing more than 10% of your body weight is considered a significant achievement. And no matter how Nico managed to lose 250 pounds, it's crucial to acknowledge how challenging this feat must have been. Losing weight is impressive because it means battling against your own biology. Our bodies are designed to hold on to extra weight as a defense mechanism just in case of famine. As you lose weight, hunger hormones rise, making you feel hungrier, there are metabolic changes, often leading to frustrating plateaus. On top of it, you still need to stay active and mindful of your diet, keeping yourself in a calorie deficit day in and day out. It's a grind. It's been 20 whole minutes I've been on this diet. So, 
while Nico may have had access to extra help, more time and financial resources, the fact is he did it. A lot of people have those same advantages but still fail to succeed or don't even try. So, aside from everything else about this YouTube content, congratulations to him on his weight loss. It's an incredible accomplishment. The real question though is, what will this weight loss actually do for his health? No matter the method Nico used to lose 250 pounds, the sheer scale of this weight loss is bound to have significant health benefits, especially considered where he started. On the other end of the spectrum was morbid obesity, a condition that severely impairs health and quality of life. Obesity is linked to a wide array of serious health issues such as type 2 diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, sleep apnea, and even certain types of cancers. Nico himself has publicly shared that he suffered from diabetes and sleep apnea, all of which can be greatly improved or even resolved through significant weight loss. From a scientific perspective, research shows that even a modest 5-10% to reduction in body weight can lead to significant health improvements. These include better blood sugar control, reduced blood pressure, improved cholesterol levels, and decreased risk of cardiovascular events. For someone with severe obesity like Nico, losing a larger amount of weight, closer to 20% or more, can have even more profound effects, potentially reversing obesity-related conditions entirely. His diabetes, for example, could go into remission and his sleep apnea could significantly improve, allowing for better overall health and quality of life. Beyond specific conditions, weight loss can improve nearly every system in the body and even have positive effects on the mental health, reducing symptoms of depression and anxiety that are often associated with obesity. However, the risk of such extreme weight loss also need to be considered. Losing more than 10% of body weight, particularly at a rapid pace, can increase the likelihood of complications like gallstones, nutrient deficiencies, electrolyte imbalances, and loss of muscle mass. Rapid weight loss can also lead to metabolic adaptations, which makes maintaining the new weight more challenging. Other potential side effects include hair loss, fatigue, and digestive issues like constipation. Psychologically, there's a risk for someone like Nico, whose career is tied to mukbangs where binge eating is a central theme. This drastic change in his relationship with food, from extreme veganism to binge eating and now to weight loss, could make him more vulnerable to disordered eating behaviors or even the development of EDs. And while losing the weight is an achievement, part two is keeping it off is often the harder challenge. The fact that obesity is a chronic, relapsing condition makes maintaining weight loss just as difficult, if not more so, than losing the weight in the first place. So, in terms of social experiment, your health and obesity is not something to be played with. He did it because he wanted money. The real concern, though, is whether Nico can maintain this weight loss while continuing a career that's centered around bitch eating for views. The potential for a relapse into unhealthy eating patterns could be heightened by the pressure of his content. Coming back to that later, but what do you think? Will he continue his smug banks and maybe repeat the cycle and gain the weight back? Before we dive into how he could have done it, Let's discuss the rate of his weight loss. While losing 250 pounds is indeed extreme, Nico stated that this was achieved over two and a half years. To put that into perspective, two and a half years equals 130 weeks. Generally, a weight loss of one to two pounds per week is considered healthy and sustainable. Based on these guidelines, losing 1 to 2 pounds per week comes at 130 to 260 pounds loss over two and a half years. So, Nico's weight loss of 250 pounds still falls within completely acceptable range for healthy weight loss. To add, 
weight loss is rarely lineal. Some weeks could result in higher weight losses, especially in initial phase where heavier individuals could lose more than 1 to 2 pounds a week. At later phases, the rate of weight loss is usually slower. For example, in my weight loss journey, I lost 20 pounds in first 40 days and by no means was I starving and the last 5 pounds were a drag. Man, this is taking forever. Young age and turning your diet around can also have profound impacts. Factors like genetics, sex, age and prior dietary habits, remember Nico was a raw vegan at one point, also play a role in how effectively someone can lose weight. Some are comparing his weight loss to that of reality TV contestants on shows like The Biggest Loser, which isn't entirely fair as contestants on such shows have a much shorter time frame, around 30 weeks to achieve similar results. This kind of rapid weight loss can drastically reduce metabolic rates and cause extreme hunger, which makes long-term weight maintenance very challenging. Many contestants on such shows regain most of their weight post-show, but Nico had a much longer period to achieve his weight loss, making his results more sustainable. At over 400 pounds, Nico's daily caloric needs were likely in the range of 4,000 calories just to maintain his highest weight. Cutting that in half would result in significant weight loss even without extreme dieting measures. Given his history with restrictive diets, adhering to a strict calorie deficient eating plan isn't entirely questionable. But even if he lost weight at a quicker pace, this isn't something that problematic as commonly believed. One clinical trial even showed that rapid weight loss led to more stable long-term results than gradual weight loss as the very low-calorie diets might promote greater satiety through ketosis, motivating participants to stay committed. Some even argue that for people with morbid obesity, the benefits of rapid weight loss might outweigh the risk. Although there is a possibility of faster regain after weight loss with severe dieting methods, that's not always the case. Some research shows that the rate of weight loss does not necessarily affect the likelihood of regaining weight. On the other hand, individuals with restrictive or binging eating style, which aligns with Nico's past and present mukbangs, could be at a greater risk of developing severe eating problems on a rapid restrictive weight loss diet. So things are not as black and white, but for most people, slow and steady wins the race as it allows for time to adjust to healthier eating habits. Additionally, rapid weight loss can lead to muscle loss and decrease bone density, both negatively affecting overall health. Muscle mass naturally begins to decline after a certain age, around 30 years, at a rate about 3 to 5% per decade. In his recent video, Nico does appear very slim, but just by looking, we can't assess the degree of muscle loss. However, Nico is still relatively young, meaning that with the right strength training and a higher protein diet, he could potentially regain and even build some more muscle over time. Imagine him 10 steps ahead becoming a personal trainer in 2 years time. Okay, now you're talking crazy. So, how did he lose the weight? We still don't know. That's why everyone is speculating, including me. Until Mr. Nico shares a detailed account of his Netflix worthy weight loss journey, we can only make educated guesses and form theories. Do you guys have some insider information? Let's gossip in the comments and talk Ozempic. Although many weight loss medications are available today, let's focus on the most popular one Ozempic or semaglutide. Ozempic. To clarify, Ozempic is FDA approved only for the treatment of type 2 diabetes, but it has gained significant mainstream recognition for its impressive weight loss effects. But its active ingredient, semiglutide, has been approved for weight loss under the brand name Vegovi. Of course, there are other weight loss drugs with similar active ingredients, such as Manjaro and Zepbound. However, I don't believe Nicocado specifically used Ozempic. 
Well, Nico admitted to developing type 2 diabetes, which could legally allow him to be prescribed Ozempic. Here's the deal. Clinical studies on Ozempic and weight loss show promising results. For example, in one study, 86% of participants lost 5% or more of their body weight over 68 weeks, with 50% of them losing more than 15. On average, Ozempic can lead to a total weight loss of 15-20%, to 20%, though many individuals might lose closer to 10% of their body weight. Nico, however, lost much more than that, almost 60% of his body weight. Based on a review of studies, Vegovi shows an absolute advantage in weight loss compared to Ozempic, but also presents greater evidence of adverse events. This is understandable as the main difference between the two medications is the dosage. The typical maintenance dose of Vegovi is 2.4 mg, while the typical maintenance dose of Ozempic is 1 mg, rarely reaching a maximum of 2. Therefore, Vegovi seems more plausible in his case. But still, semiglutide at 2.4 mg helps patients achieve average losses of 9-17% to of initial body weight when combined with a reduced calorie diet. Nico's weight loss journey reportedly lasted 130 weeks and with these statistics it's unlikely he could have lost the amount of weight relying solely on any weight loss drug. I don't know what to think. However, he may have used them to kickstart his weight loss journey and then adhered more rigorously to a calorie deficit. Weight loss drugs like semiglutide can be beneficial as they work by regulating appetite, primarily by slowing gastric emptying, which enhances feelings of fullness and significantly reduces hunger and cravings. Given Nico's history of consuming high-fat, high-sugar foods, the food noise, those persistent thoughts about food, could have been challenging to manage without Ozempic or similar medications, making it easier for him to stick to a healthier diet. So, we still don't know if Nico Ouch. got the jab. In his latest video, he appears noticeably slimmer while returning to mug bags. He did consume smaller portion than before and also mentioned feeling full before finishing the meal. This could suggest the influence of Ozempic as many users report feeling more satiated after what would typically be considered a normal amount of food and struggle to finish their meal. Some Ozempic users also experience nausea and discomfort when consuming high sugary high fatty foods. For others, nausea as a side effect can happen after eating what they consider normal portion sizes. However, some individuals can tolerate larger portions, especially at lower doses of Ozempic or others, as their bodies adjust over time. If Nico is using the medication, he could be feeling the effects of his weekly injections, where appetite tends to decrease after the first day, then gradually return as the week progresses. Alternatively, he may be slowly lowering his dose as the principle of start low and go slow applies when weaning off weight loss drugs. If he used any of the weight loss drugs and stopped abruptly and continues to eat high calorie foods, this could be really problematic. I guess I could do without eating so much junk. The step one trial showed that participants regain two thirds of their weight loss one year after discounting Ozempic. But in his recent collaboration with Miss Candy, it was notable that he chose not to eat dessert because he felt full, highlighting a positive change from his past mukbangs where plates were shining. It's also essential to consider that in the mukbang world, there's a possibility of faking food consumption through clever editing and camera angles that make portion sizes appear larger. Many popular mukbangers maintain a slim physique while supposedly consuming a large amount of high calorie foods. On the other hand, they might use alternative eating practices such as intermittent fasting to offset highly caloric mukbang meals. This practice could be problematic in itself as restrictive binge start eating can lead to serious health conditions. Nevertheless, if Nico used Ozempic, it doesn't detract from the dedication required to maintain weight loss. Without lifestyle changes, these medications are less effective. 
rapid weight loss with those medication can also result in a skinny fat scenario where fat is lost at the expense of muscle. And maintaining muscle is crucial for overall health and metabolic function. In Nico's video, he appears noticeably slimmer, but it's difficult to assess his muscle mass, although it's fair assumption he did lose some. It's important to note that he didn't start with a high muscle mass ratio even back when he was a slim vegan and this didn't significantly change when he became obese as there is a condition called sarcopenic obesity characterized by both obesity and low skeletal muscle mass which complicates long-term health outcomes. Another consideration is that the long-term effects of discontinuing treatment often include partial weight regain, necessitating ongoing intervention. Weight loss medications are likely intended for long-term use, though we lack sufficient data on the effects after decades of use. We could end up dead. Given Nico's history with extreme diets and his past a slim individual, he may already be aware of these challenges and may have chose to stay away from a Zempic. No! In conclusion, maybe he used it, maybe he didn't. We don't know for sure. In my opinion, I believe he is not using Ozempic or other drugs at the moment. The portion sizes in his latest videos are still considerable and most people on Ozempic find it difficult to eat such amounts due to slower digestion. However, I could be wrong as individual responses vary widely. Even if he did use it, Ozempic can help control appetite and craving, but it's not a magic fix. Sustained effort and lifestyle changes are still crucial. It's a tool in a weight loss toolbox. Which brings me to the next theory, which in my opinion is more possible. Bariatric surgery. When it comes to dramatic weight loss, bariatric surgery stands out as the most effective method compared to weight loss medications like Ozempic. While Ozempic can lead to a 10 to 20% reduction in body weight with continuous use, bariatric surgery results in far more impressive 55 to 65 and even 70% loss of excess body weight within the first one to two years. This kind of rapid weight loss is often accompanied by significant improvements of health. Nico's recent weight loss matches these results, which makes me think that surgery could be a possibility in his case. I still have to eat something. No, eating the food that belongs to the next four years. But what exactly is bariatric or metabolic surgery? It includes several procedures such as gastric bypass, sleeve gastrectomy, and adjustable gastric banding, all of which involve altering the digestive system to reduce the amount of food that can be consumed and absorbed. Depending on the procedure, the mechanical restrictions on the size of the stomach leads to reduced meal portions, while hormonal changes triggered by the surgery suppress appetite. Now, the significant amount of weight that Nico had lost does suggest that bariatric surgery is a possibility. However, his behavior and recent mukbang videos make me doubt that. One red flag is his portion sizes. After surgery, patients are advised to eat very small meals, often only a few ounces at a time, and to chew slowly to avoid complications like nausea and vomiting. Yet, in some of his recent videos, Nico has consumed large portions, including cheesy noodles and a massive steak with Miss Candy. This seems inconsistent with the recommendations for bariatric patients and might not even physically be possible after a surgery. Another red flag is his habit of drinking liquids while eating, something that bariatric patients are strictly advised against. Drinking during meals can flush food through the stomach pouch too quickly, allowing for overeating and causing discomfort. If Nico has had the surgery, this behavior suggests he might not be following the necessary guidelines to maintain his weight loss, perhaps to maintain his smug bank persona. So it's important to understand that bariatric surgery isn't a quick fix and an easy way out. In fact, it's a serious lifelong commitment.
A girdle is not a substitute for weight loss, Peter. If Nico had the surgery but continues with his old eating habits, particularly the binge eating tendencies seen in his video, he could be risking serious complications. Post-surgery, binge eating can be dangerous, leading to conditions like gastric perforation and dumping syndrome, which causes nausea, vomiting, and other unpleasant symptoms when sugary and fatty foods are consumed too quickly. Based on what we've seen in his videos, I'm not convinced that Nico is following the post-surgery guidelines strictly if he had the surgery at all. Where's my steak? What do you guys think? Did he had the surgery? What kind of procedure he could have done? Share in the comments. Let's gossip a bit more. But what about his specific diet? Even with the use of Ozempic or potential bariatric surgery, a significant diet change is necessary for weight loss as maintaining a calorie deficit is essential regardless of the method. As mentioned earlier, the rate of his weight loss, although extreme, was in a healthy range of 1-2 to two pounds per week. This can be achieved through a well-balanced calorie deficient diet and it doesn't have to be tied to a specific regimen like keto, intermittent fasting, or others. Nico's diet journey has been diverse, transitioning from veganism to mukbangs featuring high-calorie meals. While it's unclear which specific approach he utilized for his weight loss, his vegan days suggest he was probably always aware of healthier options but chose not to follow them, instead prioritizing his mukbang career. In terms of diet, he may have experimented with intermittent fasting or the ketogenic diet, but based on his recent content, it seems he hasn't turned to veganism, nor is he strictly following diets like keto with his cheesy noodles. Despite this, it's important to note that Nico has always possessed nutritional knowledge. A calorie is a unit of energy. That's all it is. It's heat. Additionally, he likely had the resources, both financial and temporal, to assess the best dietitians and support available to aid in his weight loss. This raises final speculation that he may not have undergone surgery or used Ozempic after all, but instead chose to go old-fashioned route and dieted, just like the rest of us, his peasants, navigating the ups and downs of weight loss. I'm speaking to you, peasants. Now that we unpacked Nico's diet journey, let's address the elephant in the room. Where is the loose skin? One of the challenges that often follows significant weight loss is the issue of loose skin. With Nico's transformation, many uh -huh. might expect that he would experience this to some degree. However, based on the videos where he's been dancing or moving around, there doesn't seem to be much visible loose skin. While there is some jiggling, it looks more like normal movement rather than excess skin typically associated with such dramatic weight loss. In my opinion, it's unlikely that Nico has undergone skin removal surgery. Usually, after a major weight loss, surgeons recommend maintaining the new weight for at least 6 months to a year before considering skin removal surgery. This allows time for the skin to adjust and for any potential excess to fully settle. Additionally, the recovery time for skin removal surgery can take weeks to months and the timeline of his weight loss and recovery doesn't quite fit with the content he's posted. Given that he hasn't shown any surgical scars or openly discussed it, it seems unlikely that surgery is part of his journey so far. It's also worth mentioning that extreme or rapid weight loss can sometimes lead to changes in facial appearance, commonly referred to as ozempic face, a term used to describe the sagging look some people experience after losing weight quickly with medications like ozempic. While Nico's face does appear slimmer, it doesn't seem to have the extreme hollowing seen in some cases of rapid weight loss. This could be due to his relatively good skin elasticity or simply his overall age and genetics, timeline or the fact he didn't use Ozempic. In the end, Nico seems to have managed to avoid one of the most visible challenges of rapid weight loss, at least for now. 
Whether through luck, genetics, or careful management, he's maintained a fairly smooth appearance. Uh, jealous much? But also, many individuals dealing with loose skin after weight loss often turn to specialized undergarments designed to provide support and improve skin appearance, which might be something he's using. While skin removal surgery is an option for some, it doesn't seem to be part of his current transformation. I am curious, what do you think? Is he genetically blessed or maybe he pre-recorded some skinny content and he's healing from surgery at some high-end facility? Nevertheless, where does it go from here? Is he still making mukbangs? Returning to mukbangs after significant weight loss could pose serious risks both physically and mentally. The cycle of binge eating for videos, followed by periods of restricting, is not only unhealthy but can foster dangerous eating patterns. Constantly overeating can lead to rapid weight gain, undoing any progress made and potentially leading to more severe health complications like heart disease, diabetes or high blood pressure. Moreover, repeatedly engaging in binge eating episode, especially after significant weight loss, increases the risk of developing or exaggerating EDs. <laughs> Beyond his own health, continuing mukbangs post weight loss can also send mixed messages to his audience. Millions of people tune in to watch and such content could promote unhealthy behaviors or encourage viewers to think that eating excessively without consequences is normal or even admirable if they eventually lose weight. This is especially concerning for young or impressionable viewers who might mimic these habits unaware of the long-term damage they can cause. It's hard to say whether Zniko's entire journey was a calculated social experiment similar to the documentary Super Size Me, where filmmaker Morgan Spurlock ate only fast food for 30 days to expose the effects on his health. Perhaps Nico saw the film and drew inspiration, crafting his mukbang persona around the idea of extreme consumption to shock and entertain viewers while now pivoting towards the aftermath of that lifestyle. In the end, whether this was a mastermind plan or just a consequence of spiraling into his online persona, the risk of returning to mukbangs after losing weight are clear. The dangers of falling back into unhealthy eating habits, promoting them for views, and becoming obese again. For his sake and the sake of his audience, I hope this won't be the case. And I am rooting for him to start a new mukbang trend. Eating healthy, well-balanced meals, while discussing nutrition and weight loss, social issues, and playing violin. But in the end, money makes the world go round, and we are the one watching also partially determining what he will do next. That's it for today's video and I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching my dear and if you are on your weight loss journey or interested in the nutrition topics, please like, comment and subscribe. Work on your health. Until next time, bye!